Hey folks, and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Epic Encounters Swamp of the Hydra box. This is something I've actually wanted to pick up for a long time, one of these Epic Encounters boxes, but they've always been just a little bit out of what I would consider my comfortable price range for an unknown product. Well, I found this one on sale at one of my favorite shops, and I couldn't resist picking it up, partially because I've always wanted to try one of these boxes, and partially because the Hydra is one of my favorite monsters, both for D&D and just in general. So I'm pretty excited to have a look at it. Let's get started. The first thing I notice about the Epic Encounters box is that it feels like a premium product, which is good since it is certainly charging a premium price. But the quality of the materials, the artwork, and really everything inside the box is just at a really high standard. That's a good start. Opening the box, the first thing I see is the booklet that has all the information for the encounter in it. The high quality artwork and the production value continues throughout, but more importantly, the encounter they provide here is full to bursting with excellent detail and combat and story ideas. They do provide their own story. This one connects to a previous goblin-centric box, but they also give story seeds for other ways you might hook this into your campaign. It includes markers you can use as goblin foes if you don't have any, as well as unstable terrain, a poison gas cloud, and there's even a counter you can assemble to track how many heads the Hydra currently has. Now there's a double-sided map along with it that has a lot of different terrain features, and each of those features has a combat mechanic built into it, either a way of helping or harming the players, or something the Hydra itself can use during the fight. All of this is detailed in the book, along with strategies the Hydra will use that vary depending on how the players approach the encounter. I thought this was brilliantly done, well written, and inspirational. The detail in the combat encounter and how well thought out it is, it's just really impressive. I wasn't expecting it to have that level of detail. Speaking of detail, you can get a good look at the Hydra itself too. The mini is quite large and extremely detailed. I love the sculpt and it's just filled with excellent, crisp textures that I'm already sure will be beginner friendly for painters. This is easily the coolest Hydra I've ever owned and I'm looking forward to painting such a detailed rendition of my favorite monster. And here are some other various minis for scale if you're curious. Before moving on to painting the Hydra, I did want to point out that in the manual, the Hydra and the stats for all of the challenges come in three different difficulties depending on what level your party is. That makes the adventure much more approachable and much easier to integrate into your game. Like everything else in the box, it's very well thought out and makes the encounter less work to use it, which is always great. Now on to the painting. I started with a simple white spray and to be honest, I wasn't sure where I was going with this yet in my head. Thanks to the old Heroes of Might and Magic games, Hydras are mostly green and swampy colors. But with moss and branches all over the sculpt already, I didn't want it to end up seeming monotone. After looking for inspiration, I found pictures of albino crocodiles and alligators instead, and that's the scheme I ended up going with. So from the white spray, I base coat the miniature in deck tan. This is an off-white that's going to keep things light while giving me room to highlight up still and make things brighter. Next, I take a pink speed paint and water it down about 50-50 water and paint. I paint this into all of the shadows, including along the belly and in the crevices of all the spines and armor plates. It looks stark now, but future steps will knock this down to something much more reasonable and blend it in. To get some variation in shadow color and tone, I based the armor plates in Glacier Blue. Another off-white, but with a much colder, more blue tone to it. Again, this looks kind of wild and out of sync now, but it comes down to trusting the process and trusting yourself to pull it off. If that doesn't sound like you, well, it's good to push your limits as a painter. The worst thing that can happen is you have to strip the model and try again. That's not the end of the world, and sometimes it's how you learn. With that done, it is dry brush time. The first of several dry brush times. 
Now this is pale sand, a color that is basically one step closer to actual white. And this is just going to go over everything I've painted so far. The skin, the armor, the shadows, everywhere. This dry brush is actually the first step in blending all of these different tones together. And I do love dry brushing on giant monsters. If you don't own an airbrush, it's one of the easiest ways to bring in more colors, to blend, to pick up highlights. There's a lot you can do with just dry brushing, and it's satisfying, simple, and fun. On the other end of the scale, we have glazing. No, I'm, I'm just kidding, it's not really so bad. It can be a little intimidating though if you're not used to it. Glazing is when you dilute a paint to a very watery, thin consistency and paint it on over many, many layers, leaving each one time to dry. This gives you a lot of control over where the strongest pigmentation ends up, and it also lets you blend really smoothly. It's great for transitioning one color into another like I'm doing here, or for just smoothing out already existing blends like say on the folds of a cape or a robe. Here I'm using it to add some color to the head frills and jaws of the albino hydra heads. I want the heads to pop and to draw the eye, and adding a spot color is a great way to do that. Over time and layers, the pigment builds up and the color gets more intense, and it allows me to put the most vibrant layers of color on the points of the jaw and the head frills of the main hydra head, drawing the viewer's eye exactly where I want it. Once all of that is dry, it's time for an oil wash. Now I know how this looks, just bear with me. I was a little worried for a minute too, as the magenta and black oil mix started making this look like Barney the Dinosaur's hard living cousin. But the important part about oil wash is that you can always remove some of it after it sets up. It just comes back to that trusting the process thing. This is going to give us great shadows and enhance that pink purple tone we already used in the belly and in the recesses. Trust the process. Just repeat it until you believe it. it it'll be fine. T t t totally fine. Yeah. The highest highlights get hit with white spirit on a Q-tip to remove the purple wash, and that leaves me with an albino swamp hydra that looks like this. Now, we're not there yet, but as you can see, the wash ended up being a good thing and doing a lot of work for me. I do want to re-establish my highlights and brightness though, so it's back to pale sand to do another dry brush over the entire model. It's a little bit of a lighter dry brush this time, and I'm very careful not to undo the work that I did with all of that glazing on the hydra heads by using a lighter, more directed touch there. Now it's time to start blocking in other details. All of the spines and claws get a nice weathered bone color. Since these are exposed spines, that means they've been out in the elements, rolling around in the muck of the swamp, so they shouldn't look too clean. I drop some Agrax Earthshade on them to get some nice deep shadows, and after that it's a very simple volumetric highlight in two layers. One to establish a mid-tone, and the other for highlights at the very topmost parts of the spines. But first, while I wait for the Agrax to dry, I start blocking in other colors, mainly the moss and the vines. Since I went with this albino color scheme for the Hydra itself, this is where the tones of the swamp and environment are going to come in. Because the skin is finished, I have to be careful base coating around it, but the good news is that fully dried oil paint is very durable, so if there are any mistakes, it's simple enough to use a clean brush and some water to quickly just wipe them away. Just make sure you're keeping those close to hand. You don't want to be looking for a clean brush while paint is drying in the wrong spot on your mini. Of course, this swamp algae texture is perfect for dry brushing, so I take a nice yellow green and highlight it up. It's the same technique I used on the skin. Instead of an oil wash afterwards though, the algae gets a careful wash with known oil just to deepen the shadows and increase the contrast between the algae and the skin as well as the mini as a whole.
The base coat on the vines gets done with Garagax Sewer Contrast Paint. I chose that because it's warm and rich in tone, but also because the paint flows smoothly and has very good control and consistency. I can get it onto the vines without worrying too much about getting it well everywhere else. And because it's a contrast paint, it also gives me my first highlight for free. While that dries, I go ahead and base coat the log that the Hydra is standing on. The exposed inside of the log gets a light brown, and the outer bark a darker one. A simple dry brush and wash is really all that I do for these after. It's a neat base piece, and I love the fresh rents that the Hydra's claws have left in the side, but ultimately this isn't where I want people's attention. So I do enough to make it look finished, and that's really about it. Following the same process as I used for the bone spines, the vines get a nice even coat of a lighter brown to highlight them up. For this, I mostly use the side of the brush rather than the tip, and I just kind of drag it along the top surface of the vines. The texture is so deep and crisp on them that this still leaves a lot of nice shadows. Now we're really down to fine details teeth, tongues, and eyes. I go with a simple splash of pink in the mouth with a very easy highlight straight down the middle of the tongue. A couple of these other heads are being cheeky and sticking their tongues out at the adventurers too, so they get the same treatment. The teeth get an off-white with a slash of skeleton horde contrast right around the gum line because the Hydra simply can't take care of that many teeth. It's a lot to ask when you've got no thumbs. I darken the socket of each eye with Nuln Oil before coming in with a bright turquoise paint to get the eyes. It's a lot of eyes, but they're well sculpted, deeply defined, and fairly large, so it's not an issue. I thought about using hot pink for this, but I decided the blue would make the pink that's already on the head frills pop even more. With that done, I get out some texture paste for the base. While I'm doing that, I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters, especially my terrain tier supporter, Amanda Chisholm. The help and support to the channel really does mean the world and helps keep the channel funded and its creator motivated. Thank you so much. If any of you would like to join their ranks or support the channel with a one-time donation, there are links below. With that said, my Hydra is finished and I am really, really happy with the result. Let's have a look. So when all is said and done, how do I feel about this box encounter? I genuinely really like it. The encounter is written with amazing detail and thoughtfulness and the miniature is a fantastic rendition of my absolute favorite monster. Not only that, but the included rules for the Hydra fight are just way, way more interesting than the rules that come with 5th edition. There's a lot more going on here, and it's a huge upgrade to that monster that I'm really looking forward to putting to work. This is definitely worth picking up, especially if you keep your eye open for sales, and as of the time of editing, I've already picked up another one of these boxes for myself. Alright folks, thank you for watching. I've got another craft video coming up next, a couple of them actually, so if you've liked this, please hit all of the appropriate YouTube buttons. If you want to support the channel, a like, a subscription, or a share goes a long, long way. If you want to go the extra mile, of course, there are links below and I hugely appreciate that support. I hope you all have a good day, get some crafting done, and I'll see you on the next one.